Okay, eyebrow wax. So we're obviously going to clean the area first with a pre-wax. Just working it into the piece of cotton wool first. And then you're wiping away, there may be makeup there, there may be moisturising cream, there could be eyebrow pencil. And I like to stand at the side when I do eyebrows rather than the top of the bed because I like to be able to manoeuvre around and see both of the eyes so I'm looking at the person so that I can check that both the eyebrows are the same. You will sometimes have a distorted view when you're at the front, oh, sorry, sorry, at the back of the head, yeah? When you stand at the side, you can quite easily see and look across the client. And when I'm doing this side, I can push the product away and pull towards me. And when I do this side, I can put the product on this way and pull away from me. So you shouldn't be moving around the bed to be doing both sides. You can stay in the same position and be able to do both of those brows um, quite easily, okay? When we're thinking about brows, it's going to be the hardest area that you will wax, okay? Because there's measurements that you have to take. And also someone's thickness that they like might be different to what you think a thickness should be. Um, at the moment, a nice full brow is in fashion. There have been times when a very thin bra has been in fashion and the brow has been taken very thin and then it's very hard for the brow to recover. At the moment, we've got this laminated look going on where the brows are all um, pointing upwards, all kind of groomed upwards, okay? You just need to think about that if it's a young person coming in and they're going along with trends, um, you need to think about maybe having that consultation with them and um, especially if it's a thin trend because taking them back ultra thin as it was you know several years ago um, the eyebrow is not going to recover okay so if you want to think about that so I'm taking a little mascara wand and I'm gonna just groom the brows so firstly I comb them all up because any that are kind of crossing over I'm gonna just make sure that they're all uncrossed and then just smooth that brow out you see here emily has a very nice shape it's really easy for you to be to follow what she has already the shape that she has already it's really easy for you to follow that now if this was an untouched brow if this was a brow that has never been waxed before you would need to do a more of a consultation to find out what kind of shape that your client wants but you can see that Emily has a thicker area at the start with it tapering off into a thinner towel okay which is a very popular shape it gives the illusion of a lift to the brow here it's a great shape for when you're applying makeup and blending colors okay and it gives that like that natural arch you can see here yeah not everybody can create or not everybody can have a natural arch. If the brow grows straight, quite flat like that naturally, yeah, unless they have a very thick brow for you to play around with, it will be very difficult for you to create that arch. You could maybe uh, do a better job if you're combi combining it with, say, a tint or um, some of the more permanent uh, treatments like micropigmentation or microblading. Yeah, but if somebody's brow is quite naturally sh uh, straight across, there's not much of an arch that you can create. What you do need to be careful of is creating the clown brow. That normally happens when people pluck at home and they lift like this, and they take too much here, and they create that that clown brow. So that's something you have to be very careful of. Um, also, you need to be careful with this as a gentleman customer, okay? You wouldn't be taking the wax all the way up and creating that arch for a very sharp, defined, clear edge. 
to the bra. You'd kind of take the messy ones off underneath, but you wouldn't give it an arch for, for a male client, okay? Usually they're more concerned with the, uh, the mono bra here, where the two brows meet. So, let's have a think about our start, our finish, and our highest point, yeah? So your brow should start, and you can use a um, spatula or an orange stick to do these measurements. There's three measurements that we're going to take. So our start, we go from the corner of the nose to the corner of the eye and bring the spatula up. And you can see that Emily's brows start exactly where they should be. Okay. And if there was anything behind that, that's what we're going to obviously remove. And then to find the end point, the corner of the nose again to the corner of the eye, and you can see there Emily's finishes exactly where it should be. Okay. And then we're going to do the highest point. Now to do that, you get your client to look straight up. And we're going to take the spatula from the corner of the nose through the centre of the pupil, and you can see here it's right on the point that it should be. So the corner of the nose is your anchor point. Corner of the nose to corner of the eye, corner of the nose to corner of the eye, corner of the nose through the centre of the pupil. Okay, so how does that translate? So let's do the centre point first of all. I'd say that was the area that is the least painful. Okay, usually, and I say usually because we are working with humans, so it can. Something always can throw you sometimes. Usually the hairs grow up, so you would apply up and you would remove down. Okay? So I'm just going to leave the slight gap there so that your partner can obviously do that side. So just to demo this side here for you. So I'm going to go right up to where Emily's brow should start. And sometimes you get hairs all the way down here as well. So make sure you get those. If you've got any hairs down here, make sure you grab those with the wax. Okay, so again, we're going to press down. What we need to be careful of when we're doing the centre is that we don't hit the nose, don't knock the nose. So give it a good pressing. And you can almost see the wax coming through the other side. Stretch and pull down. Okay. Now, the next part. I know where my start point is and I know where my highest point is there. So I would suggest that you do this in two sections. First bit and remove and then second bit and remove. As you become more confident, you'll be able to apply one whole strip. But for now, we'll do it in two halves, okay? What I want you to do is look at the edge of the tip. Can you see that on the video? Can you see where I'm pointing on the video? Okay, look at the edge of the tip here, okay? And this is where I want you to concentrate your eye. This is where I want you to concentrate your eye to, okay? So you're going to take the tip here and you're going to place that where you want the wax to finish. So if you can see, I can draw that on there. It's almost like I'm drawing underneath the outline of the eyebrow where I want it to finish. Yeah? You see that? Close your eyes for me. So I'm just drawing underneath. Can you see? And then that will give me the right shape. So often students don't go up close enough. They end up there down here with the wax. And you really need to be there. That and that is such a difference when you're doing an eyebrow. Okay, so I'm going to show you now. I'm going to pick up a small amount. Hold it like you're holding a pen, like you're about to write. And you can also use your little finger to rest it on the client's face. So that's almost like your pivot point. Yeah? So you can rest on here. And if you are going to stretch or you need to stretch, you stretch outwards. You never stretch up with eyebrows. So we're going to stretch outwards. 
So I'm not distorting the shape, I'm just stretching the shape that's already there. It's not this, it's not that. I'm stretching the shape that's already there. Yeah? So I'm going to keep concentrate my eye on that point, like I said. And follow that underneath exactly where I want the brow to finish. Okay, so we do that part first. You're doing two hits, as I said. Put, pop your strip on just where the wax is. Okay, and put it away. And we'll go back in. Again, follow your eye where, right to the tip of that spatula. Keep your eye on the tip of that spatula. And then that should pick up all the hairs that you want it to. Sometimes you will have a few stray ones left. You can always go back and grab them with the tweezers. Ideally, your client would have grown them long enough that they should come out with, with the wax alone. But if you do have a couple of stragglers, your client's not going to want them to stay. She's not going to want you to leave them. You'll have to go in and grab them with the, um, with the tweezers. It depends if the client's hair is really coarse, like Emily's is very coarse. What I wouldn't suggest is keep waxing over. Keep waxing over because that's when you do get uh, skin removal and you can get the scabs on the eyebrows. It's a very sensitive area and the skin around the eye is very thin. Okay, so good stretch and we move. So that took those ones. Just have a look. So if I was being fussy, I would probably go back and get this one and this one with the tweezers, which I will show you how to tweeze on the tweezing video. Yeah. So that's given us that nice arch there. What I wouldn't suggest you do, which has become popular in modern times now, is to wax at the top here. Okay, for a Caucasian skin, you would not need to wax this part here. It's become very popular in Asian communities where the hair growth is extremely thick and heavy. And what you would find is that the hairline here sometimes comes down on the forehead and meets the brow. And so, yes, the hair removal here would be a good idea for that particular client. But if we look around the room at each other now, we can see that a typical Caucasian um, uh, growth, or typically un-Asian, I should say, hair growth, would not um, need um, to be waxed here. And even if you look around the room and we look at our mixed race um, students, you would also see the same thing. The hairline does not meet the eyebrow, so you wouldn't need to wax there. What happens as we get older is actually the everything starts to droop. Yeah, we lose elasticity and everything starts to droop. And what will happen is you will actually end up with a heavier brow eventually one day. I know you're all young at the moment, but you will all end up with a heavier brow and you'll have more skin here, yeah, or eye bags as well. And you're going to want that nice lift. And if you've been waxing here and making the brow look quite straight in your younger years, when you get older, you'll have a really heavy brow. Okay? So you want to try to create that illusion of a lift. Okay? And then we'll go ahead and do the other side, which I'll leave for your partner to do. And then once you've done both sides, I will check. I go back and I look, and I check each of the ends are the same and the start, and that my thickness here, that's the main part, my thickness matches on the, on the front end. And then we'll just go over with. Some soothing lotion to cool and soothe the area. 